Good day, welcome to today's sermon. My name is Pastor Lawrence. It's always good to be back with you. And today we're talking about prayer. Now, prayer is such a common topic, you know, that people maybe have preached on more than a million times. But I pray today that the Holy Spirit will guide me and lead me and help me to um, maybe share something different on prayer and and let and get us praying again, you know, get us back to our our prayer life. And I want to start with this with this story. Or oh, well, yesterday we came here with 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 my car because you know we were moving some stuff here to Jinju. And when I look at the GPS, normally the 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 road takes two hours thirty minutes. But because of this long weekend, I saw it's going to take us four hours, you know, the normal highway. So, um, and then I saw there's an option that I love to take, and that is avoid toll roads. So that's a different option. And I saw, oh, it's going to take four hours also. So I said, okay, let's avoid toll roads. Well, I've done this a lot before, but, you know, I saw it will take the same amount of time. So for the first few, uh, maybe 40 minutes, we were stuck in bumper to bumper traffic. But then soon we took the turn off in the direction to Muju. You know, Muju is where all that, uh, where you can do the ice skating and everything. And what a beautiful road that was. You know, that um, lovely mountain road going through the mountains, ups and down. And we stopped at um, Imar 24 and the lady was so friendly and kind. You know, and it was just a different experience. And every time as we follow the river, we go under, you know, the bridges of the highway. I saw the bumper to bumper traffic. But where we were driving, there were like some stages, just no cars, just just us, just our car going through that mountain. And the next moment, there was a guy that stopped us and said, and please, please go back, move back, because they were a little roadworks. And we pulled back and all these trucks came through. Just interesting little experiences that we had on the drive yesterday that we wouldn't have if I just stayed, you know, this highway is full of um, traffic, you know, full of traffic, full of speed traps and all these things. But we saw the most beautiful trees and flowers and people on their tractors and people working in their gardens. And it made me think of God, you know, through prayer, I believe that God will be our GPS. You know, in life, I would have followed the highway. I I would have followed my way, which is the highway. But sometimes God takes us off the highway. And God said, no, avoid the highway. Avoid these things that you think is going to be quick and easy. I have something else for you. And I think through prayer, just as I was thinking, how can I convey this, the, the power of prayer, how can I convey this? It just came to my mind as I was sitting there about yesterday. Let's make God our GPS. Let, let, let God show us the way. Let's pray. How can we make God the GPS? Well, we can pray. We can say, God, please help me. Please guide me. And then you need to trust him. You know, I had to trust my GPS. I made this mistake a few times where the GPS would tell me, turn right, turn left. And I think, but how in the world do you want me to turn right or left here? Uh, I don't trust you. And guess what? You get stuck. You know, you get lost. Um, It is always amazing. Oh, yeah, no, I I need to listen to my GPS. Sometimes I remember in South Africa, I was driving one day on my GPS and it took me on a little gravel road. It isn't even a tar road. It is just this <clears throat> little road. I think it's for cows or something. But as I drove that road, I saw the traffic bumper to bumper. And I was just following my little dirt road, passing all the traffic, getting back onto the, onto the road. So sometimes God knows things that we don't know. You know, this GPS, he can see roads and maps and stuff that we don't know about. He can see the traffic. He knows. If you look at your GPS, you will see red, red and orange. Now, yesterday I've discovered, well, I, I knew this, but yesterday I saw the red is red on my GPS as we were stuck in bumper to bumper traffic for the first uh, hour or so just to get you know, through that patch so that we can get onto that beautiful scenic road that we took. 
And then my second point before I start, um, I was also watching on National Geographic channel a documentary about these, um, these, um, these uh, giraffes that got stuck on an island and a lot of floods came, you know. And so the island became smaller and smaller and smaller and they were about to drown. And this whole story is how these African people, it's, it happens in Kenya somewhere, where they built this big flood and where they went to this um, island and tried to capture the giraffes and put them on the boat and take them to safe grounds. And so beautiful, National Geographic Channel, before they started this whole thing, they prayed. They all took their, ha their hats off. They all took hands and said, God, please help us to save these, these giraffes today. Please make them calm. We pray that in Jesus' name. You know, normally people will pray, God help me. They will never say in Jesus' name, especially not on big TV, you know, if it's, you know, but they definitely say, God, in Jesus' name. And how you see that giraffe running and, you know, wildered and afraid of the people. And suddenly this giraffe just became calm and this, and this wild thing just walked with them onto the boat and they saved them all. And my point there is just sometimes we think, you know, what can I pray for? I can only pray for this or that. But from that, it was beautiful to see how they prayed for everything. You know, I was looking at this documentary and thought, oh, interesting that they pray. For me, it's not so important, but for them, it's their lives. You know, for them in their lives, it was their prayer that God would help them to save that giraffe. Now, why pray? Well, prayer is our lifeline to God, and it connects us to His supernatural grace. And I would also say supernatural power. You know, when we pray, there is power. The Bible says there is power in the prayer of the righteous. You know, and that connects us to Him. Without prayer, we cannot um, live, a, a, you know, a life. You know, we cannot live our lives without prayer. And what is prayer? Well, prayer is, is talking, talking with God. It is seeking His will. It is um, express your gratitude and also intercede for others. You know, <clears throat> talking with God, I grew up very religiously. When I was young, I went to church every day. My father even built our house right next to the church. And when the bell rang, I see there's a bell in front of the old church. We still have that bell ringing every Sunday. And I went to church. Whenever that bell rang, my father would not let me skip one service. So, you know, my parents were of the strict type and you had to sit still. And if you didn't sit still, you went outside and you get a good hiding and then you sit still. You know, stuff like that. But I loved God, but I was kind of far from God. And I thought God is this holy God far away, only in the church. But one day, um, as I was walking on a farm, just praying, I loved to, to just walk and pray. And then uh, <clears throat> God said to me, um, draw a, a line in the sand and from this day on talk to me like, like you talk to your friend. Because I was always like, oh God, you're so holy up there in your front. You know, this holy kind of prayer. God said, no, just talk to me like you talk to your friend. Now, in my language, I can never use my mom's name. I can't say, hey, Bessie. Uh, make me some coffee and then basic can you cook and basic I will be wearing my teeth around my neck you know that is how strict our parents are you never use your moms you don't say hey hey you you basically hey come on come on bring me coffee you will you will regret that and um, so I said God but I can't talk to you like Freddy hey Freddy can you please do this I can never say to God you in our culture in our language God says, but you do it anyways in English. I'm like, my goodness, I've been praying in English a long time. God, I love you. You know, it's just, I hope you get that. But God said, talk to me like you, like you talk to your friend. And I started to talk to God like a friend. And, and I would say in my language, we'd say, it means God will you do that and this for me. And it sounded very disrespectful. But I had to change that because God wanted to be closer than a friend. 
You know, God is closer than a friend. God is closer than a brother. And through this, my life actually changed. The second stupid question was, God, but can I keep my eyes open when I pray? Because I thought you need to keep your eyes closed. He said, yes, you can. And I thought, this is strange. I never found this. But I started to keep my eyes open. And then, now I could pray while I'm driving. I could pray on my bicycle while I'm walking. So firstly, let's, let's throw down all these religious things that keep us from a loving relationship with our Father. You don't need to... <clears throat> Go there and be the holiest thing on two legs. No, you can just be like you are. You can just be yourself. <clears throat> I found myself many times in this past year <clears throat> walking up these roads to this church on a Saturday night on the lowest of life where I've been. And I felt sad many times. And many times I told God, how can I do this? How can I preach? I have nothing to give to these people. Every morning when I came here, I said, God, I have nothing to give. Nothing. I have zero. My close friends know what I went through in, in this year. But every time, there was something. Every time that I preached to you, there was something. Every time when I went home and I watched the video, I'm like, man, that is a great message. I felt excited. Not because of my message, because of what I said. Because my God came through. It's the power of, of prayer. God is powerful. When, <clears throat> when we pray, things happen. Intercede for others. And this year, I was praying for my own family members that walked away from the Lord. I was praying for them day and night. And to see them coming back to the Lord. Seeing them repenting and say, I actually love God. I actually give my life back to God. It is something indescribable. Just keep on praying and gratitude. Sometimes I just say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. I love you so much. Thank you for what you've done for us. If you think about Jesus, you know, in Luke, verse, Luke 5, verse 16, Jesus often withdrew to pray. Jesus had a lot of people to heal and to take care of. But he would often go to the mountains and pray. And I love that. I don't know if you like the mountains, but I found when you go to the mountains, when you go by yourself, it is lovely. It is lovely to spend that time with the Lord. And I don't ask you to take your Bible and sit there. And, no, I, I want you to have a good time, like a friend to friend with the Lord. It doesn't mean you need to uh, pray in your tongue for five hours. It means spend time with your Heavenly Father. I remember when, when I was a pastor in the church of Sangju, I would once or twice a month go to these big mountains. It's called Sangju Bo. And it is this huge place full of mountains and rivers and streams. And um, I would have this whole resort for myself. Because people went there only twice a year at some specific dates. And I would pray in these mountains. I would switch off my phone, switch off everything and just focus on the Lord. What a beautiful time. I normally had. And I remember this one day, I also slept there. There was a place that you could sleep. This early morning, it was so cold and snowy and windy. And I went through this difficult time. A lot of things also, you know, things happen in, in, with our church members and stuff. And I prayed for them and my, myself. And I was, as I was waiting at this bus stop, in, you know, I couldn't even see in front of me because of the fog and the cold and the snow, this old lady came and she gave me a cup of coffee. And I said, would you like to uh, come sit down with me? And she walked away. And um, she said, no, no, I need to go. You know, that meant a lot to me. You know, in that difficult time where I was sitting in the middle of nowhere and this old lady came and she gave me a cup of coffee and she walked away. Obviously, I never saw her again. I know it was a human. I don't say it was an angel, but for me it was an angel. And at that moment, it meant so much to me. I could go back to my church and face all the difficulties. And I believe God sent that old lady that cup of coffee. Now we need to keep on praying. You know, I've been praying for my family members a whole year. And, you know, and we've just read the story about Luke 18, verse 1 to 8, where um, then Jesus taught his disciples the parable to show 
them that they should always pray and not give up. There it is. That, that they should always pray and not give up. You know, we've just read that before the service started, but how this judge said, okay, now I will just do it. You know, I will just do it because this woman is bothering me. But, but um, yeah, in verse 6, and the Lord said, listen to what this unjust judge said. And, I, um, and will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Are you a chosen one of God? Yes, you are. Are you crying out to God day and night? Well, that is a question to you. But yeah, Jesus said, uh, will he not do justice for those who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, um, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Where is your faith? Where is your faith? God wants faith. God wants faith. You know, in Sangju, when I was living there, I had to believe for food. I, I remember this day where I ran out of food, out of rice. My rice bucket was empty. And now I went to my room of prayer where I spent time with the Lord and hold my rice bucket in the air and said, God, my rice bucket is empty. And as, my, as I prayed that, my phone rang. It was my friend asking me to join her and help her at the school for that whole day. Long story, I've told this before, but how she stopped there in 15 minutes. We went for lunch. I, she had a market day event. I did that whole thing. I came back with boxes of chicken and a lot of money, and God answered my prayer instantly. But sometimes it doesn't happen like that. Sometimes you need to keep on praying. Sometimes the GPS is taking you on a different road. Maybe not the fast road. Maybe the slow road. If you think about 1 Kings 18.41 and then 19-8, where Elijah prays for rain. Then Elijah said to, to Ab, Go get something to eat and drink, for I hear a mighty a rainstorm coming. It was dry. For many years there was no rain. Nothing happened. But listen to his words. Um, go get something to eat and drink, for I hear a mighty rainstorm coming. That is faith. What are you praying for? In your life, is, was it dry for this past year like in mine? Or for years? I want you to say, although you only see dust and heat and wind, although you only see that, you, you can start to say at least, I hear a mighty rainstorm coming. If you would tell me that, I would say, man, I think there's something not right up here because it's been dry for so many years in the story. So Ahab went to eat and drink, but, it, it, but Elijah climbed to the top of Mount Carmel and bowed low to the ground and prayed with his face between his knees. Sometimes we need to humble ourselves. Sometimes we need to kneel down. I've done this many times. I've kneeled. You know, I stand and pray, walk and pray, yes. But I know religiously you kneel down and you pray. But sometimes there, is, there was times in my life that I would literally kneel down and pray because I needed God to help me. Then he said to his servant, go and look out over the sea. The servant went and looked and returned to Elijah and said, I didn't see anything. Sometimes when you pray, you don't see anything. Seven times Elijah told him to go and look. You know, God maybe was like, no rain, no rain. And he was just knocking on heaven's door. Seven times, seven times. And every time there was no rain. Verse 44, finally the seventh time, his servant told him, I saw a little cloud about the size of a man's hand rising from the sea. As big as my hand, this tiny little cloud was rising. Sometimes when you pray and pray and pray, you don't see anything. And then you see a little thing. And then your family members say, Ah, I think I will trust God again. Oh, it's not much. It's just a little. But there's a cloud rising from the sea. Then Elijah shouted, Hurry to Ab and tell him, Climb into your chariot and go back home. If you don't hurry, the rain will stop you. I mean, a little cloud as my hand, and he had this faith. Then Elijah shouted, uh, verse 45, And soon the sky was black with clouds, and heavy wind brought a terrific rainstorm. 
and Ab left quickly for, for Jezri. Then the Lord gave special strength to Elijah. He took out his cloak into his belt and he ran ahead of Ab's chariot all the way to the entrance of Jezri. Wow, what a miracle. First, he prayed for rain. Uh, um, the size of uh, you know, that small cloud came. Next moment, the sky was blue, covered with rain. And it rained. And even this prophet ran faster than the chariots and horses. God gave him that special strength. Brothers and sisters, when we pray, and when God answers prayer, when God sends the rain, God also gives you the power. Just a few minutes ago, he was in the heat praying. I don't know how this, but it's only by God's supernatural power that he could run faster than that clouds. And um, another story. Um, we were on a farm in South Africa, and we have these farmers, friends, and they are truly rich. They have like free airplanes. They have all these um, uh, tractors and, and equipment that plow automatically. You know, these things drive themselves, and um, lots of high-tech stuff, and they have these huge farms. Freddie knows who I'm on. Um, and, um, and they called us, and they say, please come and pray for rain. Because it didn't rain for many years. Uh, or yeah, I think it was two or three years. And they were in big financial troubles because, you know, they always plant seed and there's no harvest. And I remember that day as we drove in that extraordinary, um, in that heat, there at the Kranz, Freddie knows this farm. It is so hot and it's so dry. And as we came to that farm, the tractors were all idling. The drivers were all ready. All the equipment was ready. The seat was there. Everything was there. But there was no rain. I think that's the first thing. Their faith. They were ready. They were waiting for the rain. I saw these tractors idling. But it is as hot as a desert. No clouds in the sky. And we went for lunch. We, and we ate lunch with them. They cooked for us in their house. And after the lunch, they said, let's pray together for rain. And we knelt on the floor and I saw these farmers crying to God for rain. And we prayed with them. And as we came out, I saw not a man's hand, but I saw the sky turning blue. I saw the sky turning blue. I saw this with my own eyes. As we drove back to our farm or where our church is one hour, I was witnessing the sky becoming blue and blue like a thunderstorm. And before we reached our house, it was raining like you couldn't even see the road in front of your eyes. I saw this with my own eyes. This is not a story I've heard. And they planted and they started their whole thing. And so I've also seen this. This way God sent the rain. That was powerful. Oh, we have five minutes. I'm <laughs> not even through half of this. But Holy Spirit helps me. The benefits of prayer. Prayer gives us peace. You know, in, Philipp in Philippians 4, verse 6 to 7, it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in some situations. No, my Bible says every situation. By prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, the past year I went through many situations where there was no peace in my heart, but where I just prayed, you know, and then the peace of God came. Nothing changed, the situation didn't change, but I had peace and joy. Um, it also gives us strength and it also gives us guidance. We need to pray for our families, pray for that um, family member of you that doesn't belong to the Lord. I've heard that our pastor, one of our pastors many, many years ago, he was a wild young man. He was, um, that day they had these white discos and dances, and he was dancing every night. He would go dance, you know, and um, as he came home, he, his mom would be on her knees in a room praying for him. And he would hear his mom, oh God, please, please save my son. Please save his soul. And he's like, whatever, you know, and he went to bed. And so it carried on for many, many months or years. I don't know where he just went to these dances and discos. And then when mom said goodbye, she said, don't worry, I'm, I'm praying for you. And as he come home, mom was praying. 
And one night he said he went to this disco again and on the way to the disco there was a thunder, a, a, a lightning. In South Africa we have severe thunderstorms and he heard a voice telling him, if that lightning struck you, where would you be? In hell or heaven? And he jumped off his horse and he repented and he became one of the pastors that started our church in South Africa. His mom prayed and God answered with lightning from heaven. Isn't that an awesome story? Well, guys, we also need to pray for this church. You know, when I came here, there were 30 people. We are sitting with five or six people. I really need us to pray for this church. And I'm not afraid to preach to five or six people. When I left in Sangju, I had many times, many Friday nights. I, I love Friday nights. It feels like a time where, you know, in my church in South Africa, we have church on Friday night and Saturday night. And especially in my house, I would on Friday nights have this little worship service. I would just put on the music and sing and worship and say, God, there's no people here today. But I know you are here. I know your angels are here. And then I would just have this wonderful, my own service. I preach to myself, I sing, I pray the whole thing. And in our church, I want us to pray for our church. Although we are just a small number of people, I believe God will change our situation. I believe and I don't say, yeah, we need to fill up this church. Maybe I'm saying that, maybe I'm not. I don't care. First, I want God to fix our church and, and just and just reign in our church. Please pray for our church. Pray for the pastors. Well, this is just, you know, I'm just one pastor. There, there are so many. Uh, also pray for our world, you know, our country. They need God. If I see all the things going on, you know, our country, I'm talking about Korea. And um, let's keep on praying. Um, okay, just one last verse. We're out of time. Ephesians 6 verse 18. And pray in the Spirit. Again, on all occasions, with all kinds of prayer and request, with this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. So I want you to pray in the Spirit. What does it mean praying in the Spirit? To me it means um, praying in your heavenly language. If you can't do that, if you don't know what to pray, pray in your heavenly language. Just start to, to say, God, please um, help me to pray. And I know the Holy Spirit is praying through us. And I've seen many, many miracles, many, many things when I prayed and God answered um, prayer. And then I didn't even know what I was praying, but I knew, oh yeah, yeah, this is God's doing. Well, we're out of time and um, I'm not out of sermon, but maybe we'll do that another time. Let's, um, let's close. Father, thank you today that we could talk about prayer and I pray for everyone in this church, also the people watching this video. Lord, that somewhere, somehow, Lord, the rain will come to their dry lives. Lord, then start with me. Lord, Lord, we don't see rain. We pray for this church. Lord, we don't see a change. Lord, we pray for our, our loved ones. Lord, we don't see a change. Lord, but we will keep on praying and we will keep on knocking on heaven's door. And Father, I know, Lord, somewhere and somehow, Lord, a mighty storm, a mighty rushing wind of the Holy Spirit, Lord, will come to this church, will come to this Jinju, Lord, will come to everybody's life and change it, Lord. And we are ready, Lord, we are waiting. And we will keep on praying and believing. And we pray that in Jesus' name. Amen.